autocorrelation refers to a correlation of a variable with itself over time. Autocorrelation is something that is very commonly present in longitudinal datasets. Autocorrelation can also be confused with other features such as time trends or unobserved heterogeneity that are also present in the same dataset. Let's take a look at what autocorrelation is and how it differs from time trends and unobserved heterogeneity and how autocorrelation should be dealt with and what are the implications in having autocorrelation in your, in your dataset. So let's start by looking at what is normal just random noise. So normally in a regression analysis if we have a pooled OLS regression so we're basically taking a longitudinal data set and then we, we put it all together we run with OLS regression we ignore any time dimension any clustering what kind of assumptions are required. We need four assumptions about the error term in regression analysis. So the four are independence, no endogeneity, homoscedasticity and normal distribution. And these assumptions hold here. So this is just random noise from normal distribution and this is what regression analysis assumes if we use a normal regression analysis on a longitudinal data set. So what does the independence here mean? It basically means that the value that we observe in, in time one does not depend on any of the past or future values. So uh, the, what we have observed in the past or what we will observe in the future does not in any way influence a particular observation. So this is simply random noise. You can see it goes up and down. It could be up for a while then come down but that is uh, improbable because uh, we just take a random random sample. It's kind of like a random value. It's kind of like throwing a fair die when you have uh, thrown the die many many times if you have gotten like three sixes, it does not imply that getting a fourth six would be more likely because it's random. So, so this is a independent and identically distributed. The identical distribution means that the variance here is the same as, as variance over there. So the variance does not change over time. The shape of the distribution does not change over time. So everything is random and everything is pretty much identical. So we could switch the, vari the observations around and then the statistical nature of this data would be the same. So the time ordering has no implications on the data set. So this is independent and identically distributed. And this is autocorrelated data. So autocorrelation means that the value of a variable strongly or weakly but depends on its past value. So stock indices are a good example. We can see that stock index is not like random noise like before. So there's of course a time trend which is different from autocorrelation but we can also see that there are, are these trends it goes, goes up and down, up and down. So there is a peak here and there's a slump here. So uh, when there is a one bad day then that tends to be followed by other bad days. It's not like you get one bad day and then it comes back up again. And the same thing when, when there's an upturn in the economy, the stocks tend to be high and they don't just randomly go up and down, up and down. So um, this uh, follows what we call, um, could call a random walk basically. So we just add things to uh, the previous values. It's not actually uh, a proper random walk because it doesn't diverge. But, but basically uh, the stock goes up or down some percentages from the previous values. So this is autocorrelation. The current value depends on, on the past values. And uh, why is autocorrelation problematic? Or is it a problem? Well, it's at least a feature of the data. To understand autocorrelation, we need to understand a bit more about the nature of the autocorrelation. And autocorrelation has an order. The typical cases that we consider are the first order and second order autocorrelation. The first order autocorrelation simply means that the value of y2 depends on y1 and controlling for y1 it does not depend on any past or future values of y. In the second order case the value of y2 depends on y1 and y0 and controlling for y0 and y1 it does not depend on anything else. So here y3 and y0 are related so they are correlated 
but only because the effects of y0 are mediated by y1, y2 and y3. So the AR1 autocorrelation here is the simplest possible way of, auto, of modeling autocorrelation and it is also the most common because of this simplicity. And quite often there is no good, good theoretical reasons to believe that the effect is something other than AR1. We can check, compare AR1 and AR2 if uh, the value, if there is an effect that jumps over one year. So this is basically uh, effects, if these are annual data, effects go from one year to the next. But uh, controlling for the last year, what the value was the year before, it wouldn't have an effect. So effects only go from one to next observation. They don't jump over observations. Second order autocorrelation, uh, on the other hand, means that uh, the value depends on the past two, two observations. We can have more orders, but quite often how people model autocorrelation is that we default to AR1. If we ha want to be more rigorous, we, we test AR1 and we test AR2. And if we conclude that the, um, the beta Z1 effect here for the two-year lag is non-significant, then we would go for AR1. So we can do comparisons and check what is the simplest possible model that is adequate for the data. Autocorrelation can be confused with other trends of time or other persistence over time in the data. So in neither of these cases do we have autocorrelation. So uh, the first case is simply we have a blue line and red line and they are consistently different from one another. This is not autocorrelation. The fact that this is always higher, blue line is always higher than red line, simply means that there is unobserved heterogeneity. So the values of a uh, blue line don't depend on the previous values of the blue line, controlling for the mean value of the blue line and same goes for the red line. So autocorrelation is, is uh, in a way it, it's about trends. It's not about persistent differences. It, it's about something going up and down, up and down and then uh, depending on its past values. But if there is this constant effect, then we wouldn't refer to as autocorrelation. Of course, if we calculate an autocorrelation from a data with unobserved heterogeneity, then our, our autocorrelation statistic would indicate that there is autocorrelation, but it's basically the model is misspecified if we don't include the unobserved heterogeneity in the model. This is another case that is commonly confused with autocorrelation. So this is a time trend. So we have a linear trend of time, the, the effect always goes up. And in this case, the va observed values of y don't depend on the previous value, but they depend simply on, on the time index. So this could be also confused as autocorrelation. Empirically, if we have this kind of data set, we estimate autocorrelation without modeling the trend in the data, then we are misspecifying the model and the estimates are going to be biased. Our model will indicate that there is autocorrelation where in fact it's not autocorrelation, it's simply a linear trend. So we need to understand these differences. Linear trend means that the observations, they tend to go to the same direction, not because they depend on one another, but because they depend on time. So autocorrelation is that the dependency is on the previous value. It's not that there is a, a time trend on which the variable depends. And here unobserved heterogeneity means that there, is, there are unobserved causes of differences that are shared by all observations. It is not that the observations depend on their past values. So these need to be uh, distinguished empirically and also conceptually. Autocorrelation and variation over time are related. And if we look at longer time series autocorrelation, we can also see something interesting. Let's take a look at the variance first. So the first data set has an autocorrelation that is pretty strong and the second data set does not have autocorrelation. So this is a normally distributed noise. Interestingly, the variance of both these time series which are artificially generated is exactly one. Now if we uh, split the first time series of 60 observations into 10 chunks of on 10 or 10 periods of six years each and we calculate the variance of, of each period, 
we can see that the variances of within period are much less than one and in this random no autocorrelation data independent observations these variances of these shorter time periods are one on average. So if we don't model the effects of autocorrelation particularly in short time series data then uh, we run into the risk of underestimating variance components. So we, we, if we only look at, at six years of this data set we are going to estimate that the variance is about 0.5. So that's the mean of these, these estimates, these variances of these, these periods. So if we ignore autocorrelation, we have a short time series, we are underestimating how much the observations actually vary. That does not occur in the independence of observations case. So that's one implication of autocorrelation. Another interesting feature that we can see from, from this graphics is that in, in the independent case the var value of, of one observation does not depend on any other. So that's the definition of independence. But also if we take a look at the autocorrelated data set then an observation that is far away from, from the initial point. So initial point is very low and that means that the first six years is very low. It starts to go up but it's below the mean for like the first 10 observations. If we go way here to observation number 60. So then the observation number 60 is so weakly dependent on the first observation because it has had time to go up and down, up and down many many times that we can say that in practice the observation number 60 is independent from observation number one. So time autocorrelation means that observations that are close to one another in time are not independent but if we have a long enough time period between two observations then those observations are in practice independent and that can be leveraged in some analysis techniques. Some practical advice on autocorrelation. So uh, autocorrelation of er error term can lead to uh, biased variance estimates. So basically your regression estimates will be okay but your standard errors will be too small. Autocorrelation can be confused conceptually empirically with unobserved heterogeneity and time trends. And this is uh, important to first understand conceptually how these three things differ when you deal with longitudinal data. Then uh, assumptions about autocorrelation or no autocorrelation in the models, they always are about the unobserved parts. So if you have the error term then assumptions about autocorrelation are typically about that error term and that error term only. The fact that your explanatory variables autocorrelate does not have any implications for your analysis because in a regression analysis the explanatory variables are fixed. We take whatever values we have and, and we use that and we don't make any assumptions about distributions or independence of those uh, values. We only make assumptions about the error term. However, calculating autocorrelations from observed variables can be useful, particularly the dependent variable. If we show that our, all our explanatory variables are, don't have autocorrelation, the dependent variable doesn't have autocorrelation, then we can pretty much conclude that the error term probably does not have autocorrelation either. On the other hand, if we, all the variables that we observe are strongly autocorrelated, then uh, it would be unreasonable to assume that the error term is not autocorrelated. So generally if those variables that we observe are autocorrelated then those variables that we don't observe that go to the error term tend to be autocorrelated as well. Autocorrelation uh, can be dealt with uh, in a couple of different ways. We need to understand uh, what is the impact of autocorrelation if we can assume that the random part, the error term and, and any other random effects are uncorrelated with the fixed part, then autocorrelation only has an effect on the standard errors but not on the consistency of the estimates. So we can um, use cluster robust standard errors to uh, deal with that issue. Of course, if we do diagnostics for autocorrelation, the simplest possible technique 
or, or solution is simply if we can show that the existence of autocorrelation in our model is, or data is unlikely. So that's the first strategy that you, you should go for. Then finally, if our model is more complex, then we may want to add autocorrelation as a component to the model. For example, error structures in multi-level models, if you have panel data models with latent variable modeling, well, like a cross-lagged model, you could add autocorrelations there. Of course, that would run in, you run into identification issues, but it's possible to add autocorrelations to the model. In practice, dynamic panels lead to tricky endogeneity issues. So uh, in, if you have an, a correlated error term, then it really, really becomes a problem if you have the Y from the previous time point as a predictor of the current time point. So this is the, uh, of the, the biggest concern that you may have. In other scenarios, autocorrelation is pretty easy to deal with because it doesn't lead to endogeneity. You can just switch the cluster over standard errors, you're going to be fine if you have large sample size. But if you have a dynamic panel, then uh, this leads to inconsistency unless it's properly modeled. In practice, autocorrelation is often recommended or considered in multi-level modeling guidelines. So this is a step four, I, I believe it's the final step from Lee's and Ployhard's modeling approach. And, and they recommend that as a final step, once you have constructed your model, you should test alternative error structures to see if the errors are autocorrelated. If, if they are, then apply autocorrelated errors to your data. If they are not, then uh, you should not include other correlation of their data. And finally, here is an example of, of diagnostics. Deep House applies some simple techniques. And if you're more interested in the techniques, then uh, you can go and check Green's book or Kennedy's book. Deep House is kind enough to give us the page numbers where we can check and read about these tests. And Deep House concludes based on these tests that autocorrelation of the error term is unlikely to be present in the data and therefore it doesn't really need to be taken into consideration. You can just go and do normal regression analysis. So this is the simplest way of dealing with autocorrelation but unfortunately autocorrelation is actually quite common in longitudinal data sets.